Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my review of the Figma Jujutsu Kaisen Kento Nanami. Now, if you know my reviews, you are probably a bit confused as to the current layout of this review, the fact that Kento is already out of the packaging, and that my intro is different. I don't know, I'm just trying to change that part up. That part's not important. What is important is the fact that my boy is already out of the packaging. Well, here's the deal. I already reviewed this figure before. God, the original cut I just wasn't very happy with. I didn't think it was very good and I absolutely refuse to upload videos and reviews that I feel are not uh, up to par. Now, whether you guys think they're up to par, that's on you, but if I look at one of my reviews that I make, and I'm like, I'm not proud of this, I don't want this on my channel, then I'm like, I want to re-record this, or try again, you know? And I've actually got a bit of a combination of reasons for why I am making a second cut of this review for Kento Nanami, because my first cut was with an unmodified figure, which if you know this figure, you know this figure has quite the reputation for being a piece of shit and when I first got it out of the packaging yeah it was a pretty big piece of shit it was not very good at all it had tons of problems tons of loose joints falls apart when you pick it up however with a little bit with a little bit of love and a lot of Kiki's joint tightener I was able to make this figure actually pretty darn wonderful in my opinion, and I would feel pretty bad if after just a f if if I posted a review of this figure and said it was absolute dog shit, and then realized that all I had to do was take a few minutes to fix all of the uh, loose joints with my Kiki's here, and then I pretty much have a um, a pretty great Kento Nanami in all honesty, and Nanami is my actual favorite character from Jujutsu Kaisen, tied with Gato. So this was a big deal for me, plus I hyped the shit out of this figure's release when it was actually going to be released, and then I never got it, I never reviewed it, so I really want this review to be done well, and I want to provide the uh, good criticism on both sides, this figure unmodified and this figure modified, so you're probably gonna see some, like, you're probably gonna see some cuts from the original review, like, pop up on the screen every now and then to show how the quality was before I took some kikis to this thing and made it a hell of a lot better. So without further ado, let's jump into my review of the Figma Kento Nanami and start off by taking a look at the packaging right here. So here's the packaging for our boy right there. You can see Kento Nanami Toho Animation 570 Jujutsu Kaisen. You have Good Smile Company up there. You have a nice picture of Nanami right there. On the side, you have a nice picture of Nanami right there with his weapon like walking towards you. And then you have awesome product shots on the back, a bunch of showing you a bunch of poses that you can get him into and all the accessories that the figure comes with. And another nice picture of Nanami right there as well. So, here is the Figma Kento Nanami, and let's get in here on the look of the figure. And let's kick this off with some fun, as, as you're probably noticing right off the bat here. Yes, my entire lens on the right side here, is that the right? That's the left. Shit, I've been exposed. On the left side here of the lens is like totally scratched up. Yes, as if this figure didn't have enough flaws out of the packaging already, you can see one of his freaking lenses is just ruined. <laughs> it's just absolutely awful. Aside from that, however, they've done a pretty decent job on the face here. You can see the mouth, you can see the nice little lines right here to make him look all manly, and you know, that's just, that's just not me. They did a good job capturing his face right there. His hair is also nicely done. There's some good shading in there. Don't worry, we'll talk about the hunchback in just a moment here. But yes, there's some really good shading in the hair as well. You've also got some nice uh, eyebrows picked out right there with the same paint looking very very good as well overall the head sculpt looks great and then moving down to the torso you have his uh his uh, tie right there the tie is okay i think maybe they could have done a better job on the tie like maybe they could have took some time to make this uh this leopard print look a little bit nicer and then you have the shirt right there i want to put a disclaimer in that the shirt that the color of the blue of this shirt that you're going to see throughout this video is probably going to be a lot darker than it actually is in person i'm sorry about that it's just the way my camera films this figure i've tried like everything i can to make it look a little bit nicer but yeah it's it's a lighter blue than it looks on camera but uh yeah and then you have some nice little buttons picked out right there at the jacket and then moving down to do the rest of the outfit right there you've got some nice buttons right there some nice uh pockets sculpted as well which looks really good as well yes he has a big ass hunchback and i have no idea why on earth they gave my boy nanami a hunchback why they gave the coolest chillest dude like in the history of anime a massive hunchback it looks okay from the front but when you put it to the side that's when it's just like what what the fuck why why would you sculpt it like this that looks horrible and also the arms as well yes there's massive 
gaps in the arms right here when you are, yes, there's massive gaps in the arms right here, and you can fix those by putting the arms just like this, but if you do that, now the arms look way too low down compared to the rest of his body. Like, that looks so... <laughs> That looks so bad. Like the arms are way too low down compared to the head. The head is way too high up. The neck is way too long. It just looks really bad. But you can kind of move the arms out like this. And again, you get these big gaps. This figure does have a lot of flaws. But it doesn't look as... No, it still looks bad. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> Anyway, you can see they've done a nice job of putting the shirt behind, uh, like, uh, like be below the suit right there and the arm. And then for the legs, the legs are legs. They look fine. I do have a little scuff on uh, mine right here. Well, there was a little scuff on there. I don't actually see it anymore. Well, that's great. Uh, but there was a little scuff on there, but it's gone. I'll put, I'll put a little uh, clip right here showing up, sh showing it right here right now. But and then the shoes right here, I actually think the shoes look really, really nice. They could have picked out the, uh, they could have picked out the laces right here. That would have been really, really nice if they could have put some like gold in there, but it's not necessary, and you got some black on the bottom right there, so overall, the look of the figure, in my opinion, is not too bad, like, you look at it, and it looks like Nanami, now let's talk about the feel of the figure. Now, on the screen right now should be some should be some clips of how this figure was right out of the packaging. And yes, those are accurate. You can see he's just wiggling around. He, he feels like absolute noodles to hold. He's absolutely horrible. That is what a lot of people associate with this figure. However, after some kikis, after putting some kikis in here and some love, lots of love, uh, because I love Nanami, after taking some work on this figure, here's how he is now. You can see no falling apart in the torso, no looseness at the torso as well. The joint right here, I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to pull them apart to show you guys right here. There's a ball joint right here in the legs right here, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my boy. Anyway, there's a ball joint right here in the legs right here. You can see a socket right there, and this ball joint goes into this peg. This previously was the culprit of this figure's horribly floppy feeling. Yeah, just this is why this figure felt like shit originally, but this has now been completely super glued in place because that ball joint is totally pointless. I have no idea why they ever decided to put that ball joint in there. The thing that allows you to switch the torso is this peg right here. This is the peg that lets you switch the torso. And if you super glue this in place, that is why it's all floppy. It's not the peg. It's that ball joint right there. That ball joint is way too loose. But after super gluing that in place, which is, which is totally up to you whether you want to do that. I did it on mine and I'm happy I did. It's up to you whether you want to do that. But once you put that in there and you put it back together with, 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 with whichever torso you want, absolutely no wobble, no wiggle whatsoever because this entire thing has been completely locked in place right there at the leg, at the legs right there. So that is done right there. Another problem with this guy right out of the packaging is that similar to the Figma Arius Boreas Grey Rad that I've reviewed on this channel previously, he has drop down legs on a hinge right here. And originally those were horribly loose and floppy and awful. However, once again, my best friend Kiki's comes to the rescue, put some Kiki's in there, maybe even pop these off of their joints. I can't pop these off of their joints now because there's been, because I put Kiki's in there now, so they're way too tight for me to pop these out uh, safely. They were perfectly fine originally because they were so loose, but now that they've been fixed, I don't really want to pop them out right there because this figure's in pretty much perfect condition in my opinion at this point. I really am happy with the work I've done on it, so I don't really want to ruin it. I'm sorry. But yes, there are hinges right here in the legs that allow you to bring them down and get more movement in the legs right there. That's the whole point of that, of that right there there. But because those were there, they were ridiculously loose. They were absolutely horrible. And yes, those have also been fixed with Kiki's. I just put some Kiki's on the hinges and let them thicken up and we're good to go. You can see no more loose floppy legs whatsoever. No matter how hard I flop, no matter how hard I shake, we are good to go on all of the floppiness on this figure. So torso completely good, legs completely good, and they're still perfectly movable when you want to pose him around. You can even use the drop down hit legs still all you got to do to make this figure a perfectly acceptable figure is just get some of this off ebay and just fill in a little bit just pop him out at the torso right here take that ball joint fill that thing with super glue just super glue that thing in place so that it never moves again pop these legs off shoot some kikis into that into that right there this looks very awkward but i'm just trying to i'm trying to help you guys Shoot some kikis into that hinge right there at the leg, right 
there, let that thicken up, and then pop the leg off of the ball joint, shoot some kikis into that ball joint, and then pop it back on. And once again, when you're using kikis, make sure you are constantly moving the joint around so it doesn't solidify completely. And if you do it right, you should have a perfectly acceptable, not floppy at all, Figma Nanami. And as for plastic quality, it is exactly what you would expect from a Figma figure. It feels almost 100% like a Figma. There's not any, like, cheap-feeling plastic on this. The only thing that felt off and bad about it was the loose joints. So when you fix that up, this thing feels like a pretty uh, nice Figma, honestly. So yeah, plastic quality is absolutely not the problem on this thing. This thing feels like it's made out of nice, sturdy Figma plastic. And on that topic, let's jump into the articulation now and start off with the head. The head's on a good joint. It's got some nice upward movement right there, a little bit of side to side. It's actually on like a thing, on like a thing right here, similar to Yuji. You've got a, a peg one there that that goes into, and that is the neck right there. So you get a good amount of movement right there at the neck and head. So you get a lot of movement, which is really, really nice. And then the arms, you have tons of movement in the arms, actually. Because of the way they're made and sculpted, you can get a lot of forward right there. There, even a little bit of butterfly, you can get all the up. I mean, obviously it looks terrible on this body. On the, on the other torso, it actually looks a lot nicer. So that's up to you which torso you want to use. I've been switching back and forth constantly. I still haven't decided which one I really want to use because they both look really, really good. And then moving down to the to the arms right here, you have a ball joint in the arm right there, so you can move this around. And then you have a hinge right here that allows you to get almost a full double jointed bend. Not quite the full, but still pretty darn good. It gets you about what you need right there. And then you have his hand right there, which is actually on a really good joint. It can move up, down, swivel. It's your typical Figma hand, but this is, uh, it's actually even nicer on the, uh, other torso. And even, it gets even more movement on the other torso, which is really, really nice. And then the joint at the, at the torso right here, you get a little bit of forward right there. Again, if you, if obviously out of the packaging, he's going to have a lot more torso movement because this won't be super glued in place. But trust me, if you want to make him feel, well, don't trust me. It's up to you whether you want to do it. If you want to make him feel not not like complete shit, super glue that in place and don't break it. You want to just keep that super glued in place and just use this one movement right here at the torso right there in order to get some movement. Because he does have some stuff right there. You can kind of see them working back there. You can see the ball joint in the torso right there. So yeah, you do have some movement in the torso right there. And then for the legs, of course, you can go up, they can go forward, they can go back, they can go out. Of course, they're on that drop down joint. So you get, sorry, you didn't even see, you get some good back right there, some really good forward. Well, not really good, not at least not with this torso because this little jacket piece is in the way, but it's still perfectly fine. Some swivel right there because it's on a ball joint, a little bit of out right there. And then for the knee, you get a really good amount of knee joint right there. Not all the way, but still pretty darn good. And then for the feet, you can of course go up, down. The angle pivot on this guy is kind of stiff. And I will say I heard um, someone in my comment section told me that theirs actually broke. So maybe a little bit careful with this, but it feels per pretty fine on mine. I've, I've been posing the shit out of this guy and, per and personally, I've had no problem with this, but yes, you do have some movement right there and then you have a toe joint at the uh, toe right there as well. So articulation is pretty good in my opinion. Now for comparison, let's start off with the Figmas. Here he is, of course, with his student, Yuji Itadori. Here he is with Gojo. Here's Megami. And... Nobara. Here we have all of the JJK Figma so far. To my knowledge, the the uh, this is all of them. I know we are getting Yuta and Toge. I will not be getting Yuta. I have the uh, I have the SHF, and if I'm getting another Yuta, it's definitely going to be a Coling Games Yuta. But I will be getting Toge, so there is that. Uh, but yes, this is our lineup so far. And to be perfectly honest, after doing all. I, okay, first off, let me say that he scales perfectly with all of these. I think that goes without saying. They've done a great job scaling all the figures appropriately. You can see Yuji is in, is in a good scale compared to Nanami. And yeah, I mean, these two don't even matter. They haven't even met Nanami. And Gojo and him are about the same size, which I think is pretty much perfect. And you know what? We'll save those thoughts I was going to say for the end of the video. But now, let's see how he scales with some, etch it with, with some SHFs. Here he is with the SHF Gojo, which I think looks fine. And here he is with the SHF... Sugunu Keito, which is probably my favorite of the SHFs uh, that I've gotten so far. Here's Toto, which is definitely a close second for my favorite. That figure is awesome. And 
Here's Utah. Now, for the scaling for the SHF, because I know some people are going to, uh, after seeing this video, might be tempted to pick him up for their SHF line, which is perfectly fine. I mean, it's not in perfect scale. I don't think he's in perfect scale with uh, with Toto or Gato right now, but with Gojo, this looks fine. Honestly, this Gojo might be too small in general. Like, I don't feel like this scale is right for uh, Toto and Gojo. I feel like Toto maybe, well, I don't know. Gojo is a tall guy, but this this scale right here with Suguru and Gojo right there, that's absolutely not in scale. The that go that Suguru is uh, gonna be in scale with the other Gojo, which I will hopefully be getting in like a month or two. So very very nice right there. But if you want to use Figma Nanami for your SHF displays or just combine them together, that's what I do. They they're all on the same shelf. All of my Jujutsu Kaisen action figures, they're all on the same shelf. And in my opinion, he looks perfectly fine. Last but not least, for some random comparisons, here he is with the Figma Denji, the Super Action Statue Giorno Giovanna. The amazing Yamaguchi Todoroki. And the SH figure art, Your Forger. Just so you can see how he looks with some other various anime action figure lines. Now for the accessories. So first thing you get with the accessories is you get an alternate face where he's kind of got a mouth open right there so you can either have him like screaming or something or yeah this is a pretty good face and you can see the lenses are actually perfectly fine on this one so that's very very nice and then you also get an unmasked face well not unmasked no glasses face right here which I personally think looks really really nice and in order to switch the faces what I recommend doing is to come to the uh the head right here and grab it like this Kind of grab it like this and just wiggle off the fringe very carefully. It's really on there, so it does kind of take a little bit of effort to get that off. And then just pop off the face and pop on whichever face you want to. So you can pop this one on right there. And I mean, it's your typical Figma. You just pop the fringe back on and boom. There you go. So very, very nice job. And I really, really like the fact that they include the uh, the no glasses face as well. That's very, very nice. And then for hands in the package, you of course get the regular fist hand. And then you get a pair of relaxed hands. You get a pair of gripping hands. You get a, a hand where he has his tie wrapped around his hand right there. You have this hand, which is for adjusting his tie. And you will adjust for, to put him in a pose where he's adjusting his tie. This hand where he's holding his glasses. And this is to be used with the, un, with the uh, no glasses face right there. So you kind of pose him like that, which is really really, really cool. And then you also get an extra pair of gripping, of like kind of reaching out to grab hands with the alternate torso right here. So you get quite a lot of hands with this guy. And these absolutely can be popped on this as well. And of course, you can't have Nanami without his weapon right here. And they did a great job with the weapon. Really like the shape of it. Nice uh, shape right there for the handle right there. And then, of course, the nice pattern right there on the actual weapon itself. Looks really, really nice. I will say this thing is a massive pain in the ass to actually put in his hand. Because you have to give him one of these hands right here. You can even see, like, the black paint. Like, it, it, it's really difficult to get this in, your, in his hand. You just kind of have to, like, get it in there. Luckily, it seems like this thing is made out of some really good plastic. So it doesn't feel like... It's it's gonna break it's just a big pain in the ass to get that in his hand and of course once you do that you can just pop off any hand you want and pop that on and of course you do get that for both sides you can give it to you can give him his weapon on either side right there which is really really nice believe it or not they don't always do that you also get a nice little effect right here for his curse technique, which I don't remember the name of it, but his curse technique, of course, you get this little stand right here, you pop in this little acrylic piece, and then you can put that behind him so it looks like he just, like, chopped the curse in half with his uh, technique right there. You can, of course, get him in a cool, like, pose right there where he's kind of swinging this around. Like, the arm poseability here does allow you to get a lot of really good poseability right there. This is obviously not, a, not the best one ever, but it's just to show how this effect works, which I do think is pretty cool. And it is just a little thing that they throw in on the back of the uh, of the backdrop right there. So it's a it, yeah, it's, it's it's basically like a free little thing you get, which I like. And now for the big one, the alternate torso right here. So in order to use this alternate torso, you want to take your Nanami, you want to pop him in half right here. <laughs> That was new. I want to point out that that probably happened because I was using the ab crunch right there. So I was probably like pulling that out and didn't realize it because I, so I'm sure I haven't done this yet, but I'm sure. Yep. See, pops right off right there. So no big deal if that happens, just pop it back together. So you're going to take him apart right there. And then you're going to take the alternate torso, pop this onto the peg, just like that. It'll go right on. Then you want to take the neck and the head out of this torso. And then you get two different the collar pieces for this torso right here. You can either have it with the tie or without the tie. We'll go with the tie for F first. And you want to take the head, 
put it in here, get the little peg through the hole, just like that, just a little bit, not all the way, and then plug this on, and boom. There you have that, and obviously the arms want to move out right here. And this is actually completely, like, this is actually sculpted really, really nicely. You can see compared to the jacket right here, which had the hunchback, this one, no hunchback. So that's really nice. If you hate the hunchback, you can just use this one, and there you go, no hunchback. And it looks really, really cool. You can get him in some really awesome poses with this. I will say the arms look a little long on this, like, they they, they might be a little bit long, but if you get him into action poses, you won't really notice that. And even, it looks fine, it looks okay, they are. They are pretty darn long though, but compared to the other one right here where he has these massive gaps in his arm right here on this one These are actually nice like you have a good you have a good little piece right there Covering up the movement right there So these actually look really really good and they even have a little bit more possibility in the arms right there as well So you can get him in some pretty great poses like this figure is no slouch when it comes to the possibility and for a few more quick little accessories, you also get his watch right here, which is pretty cool. And all you have to do is just pop off the hand. Then you can just slide this watch on to the wrist right there and pop the hand back on right there. So you can have him with his watch right there. And you could be like, oh no, I'm in overtime. Time to start taking shit seriously. <laughs> so that is a really cool accessory as well. And then one last thing I want to show right here is, of course, you remember we had that other piece right here. So what you want to do, take his head out of here, bring in this one, and just like before, just put that in right there, not all the way. Then put that on, just like that, and get that on there, just like that. And now you don't have a tie on him, which means you can bring in this hand right here, pop this hand off, and pop on this hand. And now you have him with his tie wrapped around his hand right there. Now I wish they also would have included a fist so you could have him actually punching with this as well. That would be really cool, especially if SHF gives us a, uh, a, Har a Har Haruta, I think is his name. You guys know who I'm talking about, the guy with the ponytail that he fucks up in the Shibuya accident arc. Yeah, I really hope SHF gives us a figure of him so I can pose uh, Nanami kicking the shit out of him. That'd be awesome. So yes, you get that accessory as well, which is really cool. It's really cool that they give you like the alternate color piece right there so you can have this look proper and not like he has like two ties right there. So there's a lot about this figure that's really nicely done, man. And real quick before we jump into the final thoughts, I really wanted to show you guys this hand real quick as well because this hand's really, really cool. I've been, ha I've been putting him in a lot of poses with this. You put this hand on and you just bring this up to his tie and it looks like he's messing with his tie right there, which is really badass. I wish we could have got something like this on, uh, on the Yoshikage Kira Super Action statue. It would have been nice if he could have gotten a hand like that, man. They look pretty good together, don't they? <laughs> hey, man, what, who you wearing? <laughs> Get a queen. What a fucking weirdo. So yeah, I really like that. And I also wanted to show this as well. You can put, give him that no glasses face right there, which I love that they included that. Give him that hand right there, and you get him in some kick-ass poses with that as well, which is really, really cool. And of course, you don't have to use this with this. You can just have this on. You can, of course, use this with the other torso as well. There's so much playability with this figure. And with that being said, let's jump into the final thoughts. Oh, and of course, you get a Figma stand. I, I, I'm pretty sure you already knew that. You put the peg hole in the back right there, but this guy stands up really well on his own, so I don't think you really need now, getting into my final thoughts on the Figma Anatomy. Oh my god, I'm so happy. This is almost done. I'm so happy. I've almost done freaking filming this figure. This thing has been a nightmare. How fitting that it's Nanami who did that to me, just like in the just like in uh, the show with that one girl. Remember the girl the, like who owned like the cake shop and he gets rid of the curse for her? Huh? How fun. But yes, getting into my final thoughts on the Figma Anatomy. Personally. I, the, this copy that I have, I can only speak for my copy, obviously. There's a lot of QC issues with this figure that a lot of people have reported. They've reported breakages in the knees. They've reported, like, um, yeah, breakages in the knees. Not the knees, the, the feet. Uh, of course, on mine, you have this horrible thing with the, gla with the glasses right there, which is completely unacceptable. Yeah, and then of course there's the fact that when you get this thing out of the package, it feels like dog shit when you first get out of the packaging. However, in, the, in just like I showed at the beginning of the video, I showed the before and I showed the after. You can get this figure. You if if you take the time, if you take the time, give it some kikis, give it some love. You can turn this piece of shit Nanami figure into a, a, a good Nanami. I'm gonna say it. 
I really like this figure. After all the work I've put into it, I feel like I have a great Nanami figure. And if SHF ever comes forward and gives us an, S an, an SHF, I'll happily take it. And if it's better than this, I'll happily replace it. But until then... I've got an anatomy, and I'm going to be honest, I am i don't know if SHF is actually going to do it. So for all of you guys who love anatomy and want anatomy and you're waiting on an SHF, this you might actually want to go try and get this. Now, I am fully say I am not excusing the fact that out of the package this figure is cheap bullshit. Like all, like all around it, it's just horrible. It doesn't stay together, the torso is horrible. But if you put some love into it, if you put some effort into it, some kikis, that, that, a lot of kikis, that's the main one you gotta put into it, you can get a pretty good Nanami. And to be honest, I've been having a lot of fun with this, posing it with my Yuji, using the different torsos, having a ton of fun posing this guy around. I really wish I had a Mahito that I could pose him and Yuji fighting. That would be so goddamn awesome. But I've been having a blast with this thing, honestly. And on my shelf, he looks awesome on my shelf. I absolutely, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I love this figure. At the point that I've got him at right now with all the work I've put into him, I love this figure. However, when it comes to my final grade on this figure, I'm honestly kind of considering just not even giving him a final grade because the the, the grade with him unmodified is like a C plus maybe. I mean, it looks good, but it feels like dog shit. It's not even remotely worth playing with it in that original state. However, in the state I have him in right now where he's all fixed up, I think this guy is like an A+, plus probably. Like, I, I'm hesitant to give him an S tier, honestly. He's really fun to play with. The accessories are really good. The articulation is really good. The sculpting is really good. The look is really good. I like this thing a lot. I'm really, really happy with it. It's obviously a, it's an adventure. It is an adventure if you get this figure. It is a commitment. But if you go on that adventure, if you take that commitment, and you go all the way with it, you can have a pretty great Nanami figure, in my opinion. And with that being said, it is over. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe give me a like and subscribe for some more anime action figure reviews in the future and some more Jujutsu Kaisen figure reviews in the future. And with that being said, this is DK Guillotine uh, signing out. I'm free. I'm finally fucking free.